Hi, welcome. I'm Dean, and this is my second episode of the series, What Makes This Song Progressive? Looking under the hood, kind of looking at the schematics of it, sort of figuring out, you know, what makes this song progressive? What is a progressive song? Well, it's kind of a subjective thing, I'm learning. But there are certain things you can point out that sort of uh, tell you that they're progressive. The first thing is the self prof proclamation of the band. I mean, they, they proclaim themselves as progressive rock, but then again, it's still, what is it that makes a song progressive? So this came out in 1973's Firth of Fifth. One of the first characteristics of this song is that its length, it's almost 10 minutes long, and of course, progressive rock songs are not always necessarily long. There's an etymology behind the word epic, and a song that's really long tends to be epic, and the word epic, it means a long poem, actually. It's a long poem which is an interesting uh, reference to think of it that way. So let's start off. First of all, let's say that's pretty fast. He's really moving. <laughs> Also, it's very um, kind of classical, you know, now, maybe a Beethoven. I don't know. What do you think? Leave a comment below. The other thing about this intro, besides the fact that it's absolutely gorgeous and just stunning, I mean, it's just so gorgeous, um, is the, the counting. If you use fours and threes, you can follow along quite well, easily is not the right word, but I mean, check it out. We're going to slow it down a bit and I'm going to count it out and I'm going to show you what I mean. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, 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 four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Quite an astounding little melody. One, two, three, 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 four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that might be how he did it. I mean, how you keep counting in your head uh, is just uh, pairing things up in threes and fours. So the that's the intro. Uh, it sort of branches off a little bit. You just feel like you just walked into a classical music concert there. Uh, you'd never guess this is going to be a rock song. More key changing going on. <laughs> Now, this is uh, where the band all comes in, of course. And now we've gone from starting off on this B flat, now we're on B natural. Now, this is a fun part because to me, this is almost slightly Beatle esque. It's like. So we have that section there, and that is so fantastic. And this is the section where, I don't know, it's sort of like a verse and chorus together as one. Sort of like shampoo and conditioner, you know, or some kind of a two-in-one thing. There's not a sort of distinction, like, oh, here's a verse, here's a chorus. I can't hear any verse or chorus in this whole song. These sections are movements. And to me, this is sort of like the key section. So I'll call it a verse slash chorus. Let me know what you think. I mean, these these are opinions I'm giving here. I'm not some expert, although I've been a progressive rock fan for many years, especially the old classic stuff. Now, the thing I like about this, uh, that little progression there is... See, the main root chords are E and F sharp, but rather than stick around with those root notes, we've got a G sharp over the E, and that's a B flat over the, over the F sharp major. So and that's again, that's something that's really key that keeps the song I don't know, it just hems it in a little bit. 
the organ sounds wonderful. That's a very classic, uh, progressive sound. And there, a lot of uh, where the bass is moving around a lot, but the chords are just staying here. And then, beautiful little move there. And then there's this little section here, which we'll hear again in the song. A little later, maybe you recognize it, you go. Recognize that? And then it goes. Oh, there we're getting I'm getting ahead of myself sorry <laughs> and that's what makes this song so magical too is the it's sort of uh knitting together different ideas it's like a quilt you know in beds where they take they they make each section individual each square and then they quilt it all together into one big piece a cohesive piece and i think a lot of progressive rock does that <laughs> And again, another thing is here, wonderful musicianship and performances by all the band, all the band in this song. Phil Collins is one of my favorite drummers, and uh, just wonderful playing he's, that's going on there, emphasizing and. Now we're going to a complete slowdown again. The whole song slows down. You know, you can't do this on a dance floor. This is not a dancing song. <laughs> Now there's those chords I was talking about. Now you'd think um, a more popish band would just want to ramp on that and make a whole section. There's just this. Do it a few times, you know. <laughs> But not Genesis, they want to keep moving on, they keep moving on through these ideas. So they do that once. And then what do they do? They change the key. Like a cancer growth, it's removed by skin. So it's a, a sort of amazing, they can move so gracefully from here. That's the other thing that's so wonderful about progressive music and musicians and writers. They they tend to put all these pieces together gracefully so they move gracefully from section to section and you don't even realize how complex it is you just flow along with it so they went from this to this wow okay and then and now what's next are they going to go back to this again no, they don't. They go a completely different area. Let's see. Now this is neat. Phil Collins is doing some cool drum work there, a little bit of a hi-hat work or something. So it moves into this sort of a... It's sort of a C. And then there's a C minor seventh. And then it goes here, which is an E. Then a, some kind of a sus2 or whatever. So we then we get back into the verse chorus kind of thing. Now another thing I'd comment on about progressive music is not all progressive bands, but a lot of them really know how to make pretty stuff, like really pretty, like really beautiful. You notice there is the uh, sort of angelic feel there, sort of like an angel choir singing, or they're using the Mellotron, that very distinct sounding um, keyboard, which I think uses recorded tape for each 
note. So when you push a note, you hear this loop going. It's a trademark sound almost for a lot of progressive rock songs. So now we're back to this part. So that's just a, a moving along, uh, just different words, different lyrics, etc. So let's move on from there. Now there's a new section here. They they instead of going into this again, they go. So they do this chord, and then they do this. So they move into a different area here. So we're so there's like a little transition, and then it goes to this part. Um, to the flute solo, which I think is Peter Gabriel. I read that he was playing it. So he's playing some bass notes. And so uh, also Mike Rutherford's playing bass along as well. And then you got the flute going on there. You got this beautiful melody. It's like something completely new to the song. We haven't heard this yet. There's been nothing really leading us to, to expect this part. Is... And then there's the, the more moving part. Uh, it's moving along, I mean, it's... Uh, it's... Uh, so nice, uh, Peter or Phil Collins is doing a little bit of symbol work. Just, just very subtle. Again, look at the, look at the, the variation when we started off, and and uh, now we're doing. Uh, changes there from to E to E or F and then it moves into another section which is again it's a fresh new section into the song so the the chord that's leading into this is a F F yeah like a F7 I guess So what it is building up to, in fact, is, is going to go back to this part. Again, this part here. And, and it's funny, you know, this piece is written on a piano, obviously, but it would be really easy, well, not easy, but you could translate it all for a classical guitar, like I'm playing here, like... Maybe it wouldn't be that easy. And then it goes up. And it goes up again. So it's a creative thing. Tony Banks did this in the composition department. I really like that part. So now... Um, He's just descending now. And if you listen closely, you can hear the piano. It's just, it reminds me of Liberace. He's just, he's just going down and down, just leading up to this next um, exciting, uh, sort of more of a, I don't know, it's a peak of interest for the song here. It's just doing the intro, but the intro with everybody included. <laughs> The 
holding a chord on an organ and at the same time he's got another hand doing the, the lead line. On a sort of a synthesizer, so we moved away from from the original intro being a grand piano to a synthesizer sound, which yeah, you know we can say for sure progressive rock synthesizers can be a big part of um, the sound of progressive rock. So here we got a part with Phil Collins going and the bass is going and this is very interesting because um, it's building excitement again it's it's uh, adding tension to the music it's um, adding variety of course it's not just repetition these guys are coming up with fresh ideas for every new section right Again, another tension building thing is like. And then it has this really cool part we'll get to in a second here. Now, if you think it can't get any bigger and better, it's just amazing how, and I think this is another unique feature of progressive rock music, is where there's building up. It's sort of like building a pyramid, you know? It's like, it's like a grand architecture of musical ideas where you've got the bass and then you just keep going up and up and up and you just can't believe how, how far a song can go and still maintain such a an excitement and interest in as you listen to it is just amazing so you've got, reached this sort of plateau this is almost yeah this is kind of like a, a high point here right here this very part right here and uh the drumming is so cool and the drumming and the bass playing, I think uh, Rutherford and Collins are so tight on this album and so in sync in musical and rhythmic ways. Uh, it, it's just a, a tremendous, uh, tremendous performances by these musicians on this song and on this whole album. So you're reaching this sort of exciting part and S Steve Hackett is going, let's see, he's doing... You know, Steve Hackett is... He's doing his little hammers on, and it's sort of like, ah, it's, uh, it's just uh, momentous, momentous. Now it moves again, <laughs> but let's look at it in the guitar. See, again, there's sort of a stuttering going on. It's not just a straight uh, one, two, three. And then it uh, changes the key again, so it's like. Uh. And then. Yeah, yeah, except faster. <laughs> Now listen to, to Phil Collins just going, going nuts. Right on, Phil, I love it. And again there, it's a... Uh, I haven't figured that part out, but again, it's, it's, again, it's, a, it's sort of a working itself out of this key and into a different key. And then we got a whole new section coming up here. You'd think you could almost finish the song at this part. I mean, it's just so... Where would this be here? This is a... Uh, this is almost a six minute mark. They could have just quit the song at this point and it would have still been a classic, but it continues. <laughs> it's the gift that keeps giving. So now we have a wonderful Steve Hackett solo, which is probably considered one of the great solos while he was in Genesis. 
just a fantastic solo wonderful tones just sort of everything about it is so dreamy and wonderful and also again the the collins and rutherford rhythm section going on so you've got rutherford playing what are really it sounds so simple but it's absolutely critical to the song that listen listen to that bass line how that really lifts this whole section up So he was, uh, can't get that bass line out of your head. And notice too, Phil Collins is playing some uh, magically delicious uh, things going on there. And again, as if it can't get any higher yet, this this pyramid almost that just keeps getting higher and higher. And uh, Hackett's uh, and he gets really high there, and he has a sort of an infinite sustain almost. You know, you hit it once with your pick, and it just keeps ringing. Ooh, hear how he bends up. He just bends up a, 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 ha a tone there, a semitone, and it's sort of a, it sort of, it evolves around itself. It, it's the notes kind of blend. It's some kind of a delay going on. It just sounds really. Uh, and then here is an interesting part. The bass player, uh, Rutherford, he's playing. He plays this C sharp there, which is not really correct as far as the key that I can discern. It should be. But it's so, it works so well. It's sort of, again, it sort of buoys up the song in an unexpected way, even though it's sort of uh, contrary to this, the uh, key. So, so he's doing a little more than I thought there, a little more complex. But isn't that interesting how that C sharp, it's sort of uh, it's sort of wonky, but it, it just so works so well. Again, there he goes. I just love that. That's Isn't that fantastic? And what is that? That's actually the same as the um, the flute solo, right? Remember? And uh, such a powerful melody. But here we are. It's come back again. And uh, the first time we heard it with uh, Peter Gabriel playing the flute, it was very sedate and calm and then this time it's, it's just they just injected so much passion into it Hackett's playing his his uh, Les Paul uh, probably the other thing about Hackett is his his vibrato is so unique and uh, I remember the first time I heard it I thought it was a little odd sounding I thought, oh, I've never heard anyone play a vibrato like that. It's almost like, a, it's sort of like a hyper vibrato, almost like, a, and, um, but I quickly loved it. Very soulful stuff. Something I just realized too is while that section's going on, uh, there's also another track. Uh, it sounds like Hackett is playing a 12 string guitar. He's playing 12 string there. I didn't even realize that until I was listening to here with you guys here. And also the, the Mellotron grabs you and um, this whole song is so uplifting. Now that's my favorite part of the solo. One of them, one of them anyways. It's 
simple, but it's like da, 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 da. I just love that. There's just something about that. Ah. Beautiful. <laughs> now it sounds like it's going to resolve, is it? No. No, apparently Hackett is not finished. He wants to say more. He's saying more. Just like waves at the ocean, just keeps coming at you and coming at you and uh, just keeps... Re okay, now, is it finished now? Yes, now it is. And now we're at that... Uh, I pointed out those chords. That's sort of a coming home chord, really, an E minor. Uh, a lot of great rock songs have finished on that chord. So again, the dynamics, it's, a, it's amazing. This is so lacking in a lot of music nowadays, is dynamics where the whole band is big and, and then they kind of come gently down, sort of crouching almost, they're almost crouching. <laughs> oh, and there's Rutherford's bass line again. You, Rutherford, you do that, you do that. You know, and it's like it's like two movie scenes. You got one scene, and then you got the next scene. And rather than just have a cut and go from one scene to the next, there's this little overlap part where each scene is kind of blending into the next scene, and they're sort of melding and melting. So now we're back to... And what are the lyrics there? Um... Again, I like the lyrics. I have no issue with the lyrics, except for the cancer thing. I kind of wish they hadn't mentioned cancer. But again, the song is so great. It's just, it just rolls right off my back. It's not an issue. It's not actually. Anyways, I love the lyrics in the song. I just, to me, it is like a poem. It's very poetic. Lyrics are poetry, right? So it, to me, it's really like a waterfall. It's madrigal. An inland sea, his symphony. I, I just love how these words work together. Now yeah. as the river, is that the part? Now as the river dissolves in sea, so Neptune... But anyways, you get the drift. I'm loving it. I could almost want to play that right now. Just play along with it. Now listen to the drumming. It's just a... It's just, how do they keep it building it up? It's just wonderful. So it ends in that chord, and then, uh, and then it has almost like the swirling, almost like it's an AM radio kind of on in the background, mm -hmm. and they're kind of exiting the song, uh, sort of echoing the intro. Really, it's kind of in. Uh, so the the trilly, uh, the tr the one two three one two three one two threes. So curious what you guys think. I'm probably missed some things that really put a progressive stamp on a song. You know, little features. If there's anything you thought I missed, leave it down in the comments below. Dying to hear what you guys think of this video. This is a fun series, and I think by the end of the series, you know, however long it goes, maybe it'll be a hundred or more. Who knows, right? We'll just <laughs> we'll just keep going and going and have a lot of fun and just figuring out what makes progressive music progressive. So that's it. We'll spiral out for now. We'll talk to you all later. See you next video.